Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to BTM's first look at Civilization V and the Brave New World expansion. In this first episode of this expansion, we are going to be looking at the brand new Civilization. So let's go to Setup Game. And I was actually playing a little bit with one of the new Civilizations on my own last night. But let's take a look from the top to the bottom and look at some of the new people added. And the first one is Morocco. They get more gold and more culture for each trade route with a different Civilization or City State. Plus the trade route owners receive two gold for each trade route sent to Morocco and now the trade routes are a new thing that we're going to cover in a later video but let me just say trade routes are absolutely phenomenal you build these units called caravans which will again I'll say we'll show in a later video you send them to other places around the map and they bring in humongous amounts of gold if you get a few safe trade routes set up to good cities you just start raking in the gold like nobody's business so this is actually a great bonus ability of the civilization they obviously have some kind of cavalry as a unit and some kind of special building that's very cool Another new civilization here, whoops, is Nineveh. When a city is conquered, you get a free technology already discovered by its owner. And it's pretty cool, and it can only happen once per city. But that's an awesome, awesome technology if you think about it. Um, let's say you're a small and behind the time city, or you're just an aggressive warlike nation that isn't keeping up with technology, so you're focusing on making units. It kind of evens it, and Assyria is really made to be a warpath civilization. It's super, super effective. It's a lot of fun to do. Let me just say, sometimes in Civilization Five, you get to the point in the game where you play more of an economic or a science or a culture-based strategy rather than military. Assyria kind of balances that out again. It's really Really, really cool not to mention the royal library and their siege towers are both sexy sexy units in my personal opinion but we'll cover what those do more later on i think we're going to do a video for each civilization this week so we will definitely look at that Another new civilization we have here is Poland, and they get a free social policy each time they go to the next era. Uh, I haven't played with Poland yet, so I don't know how good or bad this is. To me, I'm not super thrilled about, th about this because you go to another era when you get a social policy. You know what I mean? You you have completed a social policy, so you go to another era. So I don't know about how getting another social policy. Oh, no, wait. Social policies are different. Never mind. I was thinking of technology. Um, I don't know how I feel about the social policy thing, although this could potentially be very, very effective if you think about it. You go, what, five different eras, six different eras? That's five or six different social policies. That could potentially be a game changer, allowing you to get ahead a little bit. I don't know how I feel about that, but obviously we'll play a little bit with it this week, and we will soon know then. And lastly, or not lastly, we have a few more to go through. We added Venice. Which is cool. They cannot gain settlers or next cities, but they get double the number of trade routes available. And a merchant of Venice appears after researching optics, and they may purchase in puppeted cities. And Venice is actually probably the probably the funnest civilization to play as in a very very unique way because they all they are all about that money 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 that is what venice is about they can puppet cities which is super super cool which means you conquer a city and you can choose a puppet it which means it's still technically owned by them you don't directly control it but you do get some benefit from it but they get more trade routes and as i said trade routes are remarkably remarkably effective and they bring in so much gold venice is going to be a financial powerhouse and it's a lot of fun and i look forward to playing with them on camera for you guys later not to mention they get a great galleus which is an even better boat i think they have a better range as well but that's super cool another cool one is you get to the great um or you get indonesia um and they are super super se sexy they get um extra luxury resources which makes them like really really available to expand and what it, what i mean by that is the first three cities you put on a continent other than where you started each get two unique luxury resources and cannot be raised or destroyed. So that really means your first three cities will give you six extra luxury resources in addition to whatever's in the area. And that is simply phenomenal. It allows your happiness to be ridiculously high, which means if you research the technology that allows you to have a higher growth rate, you can potentially just boom all over the map like nobody's business. It's a very, very, very good ability. It's kind of an all-around civilization with a great ability that allows it to go down any path which is fabulous except perhaps culture but even culture would work with it they added the portugal uh, resource diversity grants twice as much gold for portugal and trade routes so what that means is if you have let's say gold and silver in your trade route and you're trading with somebody who gives you horses or whatever right in your trade route 
You get a bonus for each unique resource you trade to another civilization using your trade route, which we'll explore later in game. They get twice as much per each bonus. It's really crazy. It's a great, great power. Uh, Portugal is much like the uh, Venice. They're a very, very powerful trading civilization. And I think that about... Oh, no. Brazil and uh, Shoshan. We, we have three more to cover, actually, right? Three more to cover. Both are actually all awesome. But let's go to Brazil first. They get more tourism and more riders, which is kind of interesting. And they also get a Brazilian wood camp, which in-game actually gives them more culture per turn. It's kind of like it replaces, I believe, their lumber mill. I think. Don't quote me on that. I got to double check that. But it's a fabulous, fabulous civilization to play as. The tourism thing kind of has to do with winning a culture victory. You need to have more tourism than everybody else combined in order to win a culture victory. So Brazil's kind of well set up for a cultural victory. Not to mention they have Santa Claus as their president. I don't know who Pedro II is. I'm guessing he's the one who led them in a rebellion against Portugal. But either way, Brazil is made to play a cultural victory pretty strongly, which is cool. Now, this is a civilization i played the most with so far. The Shoshan. And I gotta say, I love this unit or the civilization so much and what they do is they get more territory around their city and i know you when you hear that you think oh they get one or two more squares right no they get like six or seven or eight more squares they just get a ridiculous amount of more tiles it's fabulous i absolutely absolutely love it and it really allows them just kind of like creep over the map so quickly it's just like boom they're all over the place it's awesome not to mention they get a combat bonus on their own territory and they get a pathfinder which replaces their scout which is again super cool super cool i really like the shoshun as i played with them a little bit and lastly the zulus they get a faster military upgrade and their units cost 50% less maintenance if they are a melee unit, which is fabulous. So that's what the new civilizations look like, guys. And what I'm going to be doing this week is I'm going to be covering a civilization each day in order to... Be, I'll play it a little bit in-game and we can see how it works and maybe play with some unique units. We'll learn about trade routes and cultural victories and it'll be super, super fun. And the reason why I'm doing this instead of Age of Empires is I got surgery on my left forearm today, actually. So I really cannot play a... Um, RTS game at a high level right now my arms kind of out of it and as the anesthesia wears off my arms gonna hurt more and more so this is awesome for me because I love this game it's released and it means I don't have to use that hand as much so that's what's going on here and I hope you guys enjoy and in the next video we will be starting a game with one of our new civilizations I hope you guys stay tuned and until next time guys good luck and happy hunting